Omar says, I got out of the driver's seat and I let my Tesla handle a crowded road on its own. Just kidding, I would never do that. But can you prove there was a driver in the car? We need to look at these um, reflective surfaces. It's going to be hard to prove anything. I think I see something here. No, that was a tree. Omar says, all my FSD drives today were zero intervention. Robot taxi is needed. Legacy OEMs will cut their own balls off before they license FSD from Tesla. Doesn't mean it won't ever happen. I mean, it will be a last resort only if when they reach desperation, like we saw with the supercharging network. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then all at once the same will happen with fsd licensing as well troy weighed in to level two is not enough because in case of an accident some people will blame fsd and some will blame the driver for not taking over quickly enough level three with a 10 second time window to take over would work but i don't see tesla achieving that anytime soon this is a great argument for all of the tesla bears to use just because tesla keeps getting closer to generalized autonomy doesn't mean they will ever get there right oh wow look at tesla fsd searches surging all of this will look completely flat once tesla solves fsd and makes it safer than human driving look at text messages uh, tesla is sending to its potential customers sawyer got this from tesla get one month of access to full cell driving supervised when you take delivery of a new model s x or y FSD supervised can navigate curves, intersections, turns, and more. Order yours or take a demo drive to experience FSD for yourself. Turns out Elon emails our tweets to the Tesla team. Every Tesla leader has gotten emails from Elon Musk and each other with solely a forward of an X post that has a good suggestion from one of you. When I first joined Tesla, I thought it was wild that our CEO would action items from X by literally forwarding them, usually with a question mark or an exclamation mark as a subject line. Now, I think it's kind of crazy not to act on the best ideas, especially from our customers with speed and seriousness. This post on X is going semi-viral. It got 1 million views and he only has 13,000 followers on X. He explains why I will never switch from my EV to one of these new gas cars. First of all, range anxiety. I'm used to being on 100% every morning with a gas car. I might not have enough gas to get to work and have to waste time going to recharge it. This is such a big benefit of owning an EV, but you can't really quite experience that until you actually own an EV. You need a lot of educational campaigns to really show that benefit. Because you don't think of going to a gas station as this big chore, but after owning an EV, it becomes this wild idea. Why would you ever need to go to a gas station when you can just have an EV fully charged every single morning. Maintenance, of course, is much better with EVs. Risk of fire is actually lower. And the average gas car costs 20% more than a Tesla. One major exception, though, would be if I had to do road trips pretty much every day or if my daily commute was over, let's say, 300 miles, I would own a gas-powered vehicle today and not an EV. But as charging speeds improve and battery densities increase, that will no longer be an issue. And that's a small subset of population anyway. So the Cybertron that was put up for auction, there are still three days left and it's going to be sold for over $239,000. The demand is very strong for Cybertruck still, even at these extreme prices. Oh, sorry, it's 242,000 now. Elon replied with true to this post, advertisers should use memes for marketing. They are likely to attract more attention than traditional ads. And Tesla should try this too. I see what you did there, Dylan. I see what you did there, but I don't disagree. Elon Musk is going to be taxed a bit higher going forward, specifically SpaceX. President Biden wants companies SpaceX, really, specifically here, that use American airspace for rocket launches to start paying taxes into a federal fund that finances the work of air traffic controllers. I haven't dived deep into the story on the surface. It does sound reasonable, and there will be more rocket companies. It won't be just SpaceX. This year, if things go according to plan, uh, SpaceX will do probably 90% of all Earth mass to orbit, and then China will do about 6%, and the rest of the world will do about 4%. 
Okay, it is mostly just SpaceX. Now, mostly, really, it is just SpaceX. Even countries cannot compete with SpaceX. I was a bit speechless after I heard that number. It's pretty high. Because before, SpaceX was at about 80%, and going from 80% to 90% is very difficult. I mean, the gap between SpaceX and the competition is not it's not becoming smaller it's becoming bigger there were a few more moments that really impressed me in this presentation if you haven't seen it yet i definitely say watch it right now like and subscribe if you haven't yet and i will see you in the next episode make sure that you watch this one though if you haven't yet or if you haven't finished watching the whole speech you can watch it now in full